On this 37 axle par, we're gonna look under this under the the cockpit floors over here on the port side. A little access plate. Our pump, our strainer. This is the out to the unit. And then here coming out, we have our purge valve. So this purge valve. All you gotta do is open this up, purge out any air that's in the system, close it back up. Um, over here we have our valve to close off the water flow to the unit. So for a boat that's coming out of the water a lot, or for a boat whenever you need to clean the strainer, you're gonna close this valve. This unscrews off. Um, and then once it's cleaned, put it all back together, open that valve, uh, purge any air out that could have been introduced into the pump through this purge valve right here, and we're in business. Over here we have the fuse for the pump. We can close all this back up again. between the two aft seats. This comes up, so there's this little latch. Once this is opened up, we have access underneath. Under this floor where I'm at, we have the, uh, we have the battery, so I'll open that up in a second. This is the battery switch for the inverter. No real reason to be turning this off unless the boat's going to be in some sort of a high and dry storage just connection from shore power you don't want to turn this off if you're connected to shore power because the lithium batteries will not charge if you do this right here is the battery disconnect for the unit it's also the uh diffuse protection for the unit so if the unit has no power to it you're on the display pushing the buttons nothing's coming on it's because this tripped so when it's tripped this yellow stick on the bottom will be out um, or if you're going to be disconnected for a while and you want to cut power, that would be once again, you push this button, it'll disconnect all power going to the control. Unnecessary to do if the boat's connected to shore power, but if you're disconnected from power um, for an extended period of time, the control does draw some power. So you would want to turn that off so it doesn't drain the batteries. This is our DC to DC charger or battery to battery charger. This is what's taking power from the engine alternators. It's connected to your house battery. And this is what's charging the uh, lithium batteries when you're disconnected from shore power and your engines are running. We have over here the fuse for the DC to DC charger. We have over here the fuse for the inverter. Over here is the, uh, is the shunt. So this is what's reading the power on the Balmar, so we'll go and check on that. Over here we have a secondary fuse on the negative side of the DC to DC charger. So this is a... Uh, 40 amp mega fuse. I'm sorry, it's a 50 amp. 50 amp mega fuse. So let me close that back up. This is the um, the Bluetooth gateway for the Belmarsh. This is what allows us to view it on our cell phone. And then here we have the fuse. So on the initial setup. It's gonna be locked. You're gonna to have to pull this fuse for a second, put it back in, connect to the gateway, and that's just to prevent anyone else from connecting um, to your um, to your own gateway. Over here, we have our 2000 watt master volt inverter charger that also has 100 amps of charge. here and lift this up you can see the two 250 amp hour lithium batteries right down there so 500 amp hours total if the AC units running alone with no inverter you would have 16 hours of runtime now we have the inverter so the secondary battery was made to compensate for the added use of the inverter This is the exterior outlet. So you're just pushing this bottom button a little bit. 
this lifts up. You have these two outlets powered. And these are powered through the same outlets in the cabin through that GFI. So we have the GFI protection on these two exterior outlets. So if you do trip those outlets, it'll trip the GFI in the cabin. We have a single four inch vent that's blowing air into the, into the forward cabin. You can see this outlet, we have the green light on. I'm currently disconnected from shore power. So this is running off the inverter right now. And if, it, if, it, um, if the outlet trips, what you'll see is you'll see this red light on. That would mean that something tripped the GFI, whether it be outlet in the uh, water in the outlet outside or whatever the situation is, you just push this reset button here and it should be all right. If it keeps tripping, you could have an issue with the GFI or you could have an issue with the outlet outside. But the common thing is gonna be that reset button right there. The unit is located back in the head over here. It's a 5,000 BTU. We have the return vent right over here. We have the control for the unit over here. So we have temperature up and down. So I'll set it to 73. This is cool mode, so this little snowflake is here to signify that we're in cool. Um, if I play around with this, it'll change. Um, so I have cool mode, that's the snowflake. Then I have a green fan, that signifies that I'm in fan only mode, so the compressor will not run. And then I have the, uh, the sun icon, which is red, which signifies that I'm in heat mode. And so then the temperature will come on um, if we're above this temperature here. So if it's 88 right now, I would set this up and I'd have to get above 88 for the compressor to kick on. If you have any alarm codes, this would start flashing. So alarm button on the bottom, you just push this button and an alarm fault would show up here, which the most likely one to see is going to be an error 8 or an error 10, which is going to signify that we don't have any, um, it's going to signify that we don't have any water flow or poor water circulation. So you'll likely need to check the strainer or your pump could be running dry where you'd have to purge the pump. So any errors on display will be visible. So if we move this, you'll see this little arrow and it's gonna move with the arrows when I move the arrow up. And so that corresponds with these readings here on the side. So shore power, so actually shore power, so I was set for 30. I'm actually gonna set it for 20. Because what I wanna do is I wanna make sure the main breaker on here is 20 amp, is a 25 amp, and you still have the existing charger that's not going through this inverter. So I wanna make sure you don't trip your shore power pedestal. So I'm gonna set it to 20 amp. Then we're going to go to unit readings. And I'm gonna enter this menu. So I have all my grid inputs and all that. And here's where you see your fault codes. So you would have a fault code written here where it says no faults, and this light would be red. And then to, so then you would turn on and off the inverter. So you would turn it off there. And what I wanted to show is with this off, when I go into the cabin, that outlet that was lit before is no longer lit now. Now it's completely off. Then we're gonna go back over here. We're gonna turn it back on. The outlet's back on again. So the only symptom, or I guess the only situation that would be a little bit different is gonna be a battery under voltage. So if you have a battery under voltage, let's say the boat was connected to shore power um, and the shore power for some reason disconnected and the batteries went completely dead. Um, the lithium batteries went completely dead. They will shut themselves down and they'll go into an auto, uh, into an auto protect mode where there'll be no voltage coming out of the batteries. The master volt, uh, inverter charger will not sense those batteries and will not wake them up, so to speak. Um, although if you reconnect shore power, you just have to wait for the house battery to come back um, up to a certain level of charge. And then that device in the back, the red device, the battery to battery charger 
would then wake that battery, wake that bank back up again. Once that bank gets woken up, you can then do um, what I showed on the, um, on the screen earlier, as far as the turning off and turning on. But that just has to be done with the battery, with the, uh, with the shore power off is the uh, easiest way to do that. So you, tur you turn the, the shore power off momentarily, you turn on and off the display to wake it to set, reset that fault, and then you'll be back to normal again. That's the only oddity that, that can happen. Um, outside of that, as far as unit location, we can access it. So it's back here behind this, um, behind this cushion. So here's our electrical box. There's the unit over there. So that way maintenance or service would be extremely practical, but you still don't see the unit, everything's still covered up. And then we're gonna go out and take a look at the Belmar. Going through this Belmar right here. So we're at the helm. It's like 100% state of charge. Doesn't have state of health yet. It still has to do a few little learning cycles. So drain the batteries, take them back down, or charge them back up again, drain them back down. Showing that we're drawing 29 amps from the from the unit running. I have no engines running, no shore power connected. Um, this battery's at 13.2 volts. Um, 12.7 volts is going to be the, uh, the house battery. 12.9 volts is going to be the engine battery. And um, basically what I'd like to do is I'm going to go and connect the shore power and um, see how much charge we can get out of the, uh, the inverter charger while the, uh, while the AC is running. So I just connected shore power. You see that the, I'm now showing positive amps plus seven, plus nine. Um, so the, the inverter is going to start increasing power and we should see this getting to about a positive 65 to 70 amps. So we can go and look inside at the display and see what we're supposed to look for when we're inside the boat, looking at the inverter display. Here we can see that we're talking, it's putting in right now 71, 74, 75. Just increasing the amperage. charger we have the unit running and so we're drawing we're putting back to the batteries right now 70 amps uh, right now we don't have the engines running we have nothing else going on here and so everything's pretty automated there's nothing really to do in here it's just knowing what to look out for and the overall functionality of the system and uh, when I got onto the boat it was it was 91 uh, right now we've dropped to, we're showing us 86, if I'm not mistaken. So right now I'm at 86 inside, been for about 10 minutes. And I've had the door opened and closed on different occasions. Hope that answers any questions. Thing to look for is I'm right here in front of the gold wing doors so if we want to get an idea of my current location and if we look right there you'll see the, the uh, 
the uh, water discharge of the unit. So we just want to keep an eye and just make sure that we do have water discharge coming out of the side whenever the unit is running. Um, so whenever I start it up, I usually come outside, check and make sure that I have water flowing. I didn't show that earlier, so just wanted to make sure that we're on the same page and that would be know what this is and where it's going.